everyone, Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is going to be an exciting week. We're looking at Revelation chapter 9. And in Revelation chapter 9, we're dealing with uh, the seven trumpet judgments. Uh, this week, today, we're studying trumpet or judgment number six. It's also known as the second woe. The first woe were those hundreds of thousands of locusts released from the bottomless pit to torment men who were not sealed in their forehead or hidden away by God to protect them, being the converts. So we have the remaining population of the earth will come under torment by these locusts, and it will be so bad they'll want to die. But death will be suspended for the five-month period that these locusts are on assignment. This is going to be a horrendous time. I don't even want to think about it uh, whatsoever. Now we move into number six. This is the sixth trumpet judgment. It's known as the second woe. We found this in uh, Revelation 9, verses 13 to 21. We're going to start to dissect this just a little bit today and study it to, today. It says in uh, verse number 14 that uh, the sixth angel who had the trumpet Made it, declared to four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates that they are to be released and let go. And these four angels were released and their assignment was to kill one third of all mankind. Now, it then says that they raise up, or it says they, that uh, the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million strong. I heard the number of them. So we have four angels at the river Euphrates who have been essentially held hostage there or held captive there. They are being released. When they're released, they are going to have an assignment to kill four, uh, one third of all mankind. And then we have the reference to a 200 million man army that will come and they will have the power to kill through the, uh, the smoke, the fire, and the brimstone that comes from their mouth. Now, let's get into this. Um, the verse 14 makes reference to the f f four angels who are bound and are to be released. The four angels who are bound to be released are part of the angels that uh, rebelled with Satan and got kicked out of heaven. And they were, they were held and bound at the river Euphrates for this end time assignment that they have. Now, I'm going to take you to the book of Jude for a minute and verse number six, because this helps us just a little bit. It says the angels who did not keep their proper domain, that would be heaven, but left their own abode, referencing heaven. He has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So these four angels have been held and reserved in everlasting chains until their assignment, until the judgment of the last day. Verse 15 says these four angels have a time period in which to do this. And it's one year, one month, one day, and one hour. So it turns out to be 13 months plus one day plus one hour. You'll see why this is so important in just a few minutes. Um, this assignment means that the four angels are going to start working with verse number 16. Verse number 16 says that the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million men. I heard the number of them, 200 million. Now we know just from previous general studies and things we've heard over the years that there will be a 200 million man army that leaves the Far East and marches towards Israel and will arrive in Israel for the Battle of Armageddon. So let me, I'm going to bring this into perspective for you here. This 200 million man army from the Far East 
is going to be traveling for a 13 month period. And along the way, according to verse number uh, 15, they're going to destroy one third of all mankind. And in verse number 17, it says that they um, are going to be able to destroy them out of their mouths will come fire, smoke, and brimstone. Now we're talking about an army. They're not traveling on horses like uh, would have existed at the time that John the Bap John heard these illustrations or these examples to, to record them. Um, this is gonna be a mighty, mighty mechanized, uh, motorized, uh, state-of-the-art army. So when it refers to the smoke and fire and brimstone, it's referring to the massive guns they will have, the tanks they will have, the other artillery they will have. It When it fires, it's gonna be like smoke and fire coming out of those uh, long-armed uh, um, cannons and so on and so forth. And um, when they meet opposition, they're going to destroy that opposition. They're going to take out one-third of all population. Wow. Uh, let me take you to another verse. I hope I'm helping you here today. We're talking about woe number two, six trumpet judgment. And we're talking about Revelation 9, verses 13 to 21, where it refers to four angels being in charge of what turns out to be a 200 million man army coming from the east. Let's go to Revelation chapter 16, verse number one. It says there, the sixth angel, okay? The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. So now we're talking about the bowl judgments. Previously, we're talking about the trumpet judgments, but these two judgments, six angel go hand in hand. They're going to pour out the bowl on the great river Euphrates and its waters will dry up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So I hope you can connect this together. The sixth judgment, the trumpet judgment, talks about four angels bound at the great river Euphrates being released. It then talks about their assignments to kill a third of all mankind. And then it makes reference to the 200 million man army. Here we see the sixth bold judgment being poured out on the great river Euphrates to dry it up. So it's a dry riverbed to make the way from the, for the kings of the east to be prepared. So, this verse 17 and 18 back in Revelation 9 refers to this military army of great might, great strength, great power coming with, um, uh, with, with uh, weapons that will have fire, smoke, and brimstone to destroy one third of all mankind. Now, they're going to run into opposition, and when they do, they're going to eliminate that opposition, and that is going to entail one third of mankind. It's gonna be quite a massive battle here. But what we see in, in these two sets of verses, I want you to see it again. Revelation 9, 14 to 18, and Revelation 16, um, they're both describing, verse number 12 in Revelation 16, I may have said one before I met 12, they are both describing this great river Euphrates and this will be the pathway for this army. And we know this army's coming for the Battle of Armageddon. But there's so much more I want to share with you on this. So please tune in again tomorrow. We'll pick up on this. And it's going to bless you a great deal. Thanks for joining us today. Bye for now.